Man, you're the round. OG7 back here. And today, like each and every day, we're all fortunate, dude, to be alive above ground, man, taking in that good prana, baby. <sighs> wow, man, I got to tell you guys, as a guy who caught the, how do I say it, man, the, the V, the C19V, I caught that COVID, man. I'm not trying to get this video taken down. I caught COVID in uh, 2022. Wow, dude, I couldn't breathe, man. Uh, my chest was hurting, my heart was beating crazy. I was coughing so bad, my head wanted to explode. I couldn't catch my breath, man. So I ended up dying twice in the emergency room. For those of you who don't know the situation, I'm gonna try to find some pictures and put it in my community tab so you can see the horror, the horrors I experienced. Like they brought me back twice, resuscitated me with the vendor. I mean, uh, it fit the fibrillator and I woke up with tubes in my mouth and nose and beep, beep, hooked up to stuff, breathing for me and feeding me. I appreciate being able to breathe deeply, dude. <sighs> Fill your lungs with that good air. It's very rejuvenating on a cellular level and a metabolic level. So I'm going to share with you guys stories of victory and glory. The victory that we're alive, guys, and the glory of understanding, dude. Live each day as if you last because you're not promised tomorrow, man. And that's why it's so important to get in touch with Beast Mode Law because if you notice beasts and animals of the field, dude, they live in the present moment. They're not concerned about their phone or TikTok or Instagram or Facebook likes or YouTube or Reddit or none of that stuff, dude. These distractions, dude, they live in their life, man. So I wanted to share that with you guys because... uh there's this book I recommend to you called The Precious Present. Wow. I think it's by Eckhart Tolle. And it teaches you, dude, to be in the moment. Don't think about tomorrow because it's not promised to you. And don't think about the past because you can't change it. Think about the here and now. Be the best that you can be. The best version of yourself each and every day. And, dude, the floodgates will open up for you. So enough of that motivational stuff, man. The top of today's video is what really happens to pedophiles in maximum security prison? Dude, I want to share with you some true, honest, and transparent stories that I experienced in the five different prisons I was housed in during my 26 year prison sentence in maximum security prison, dude. I want to share with you what I've experienced. And let's get straight down to the down and dirty. I want to be totally honest with you, dude. In maximum security prison, dude, man, the pedophiles don't make it, dude. Like, they lucky if they make it off the bus because it's so, like, this is what I try to share with you guys. In maximum security prison, what's scary about maximum security prison, I'm going to be honest with you, well, I was fearful. You got lifers in there never getting out, dude, never getting out. You got some dudes called dead man walking. And what separates a lifer from a dead man walking, some dude's crimes are so heinous, so horrific, dude, so monstrous. The state has given them the death penalty, the death sentence, bro. So here's how it works in California. I don't know about back east. I haven't been incarcerated there since I was a young lad. But I know for sure in California when I was incarcerated in the 90s, once you get the death sentence, dude, you would get these appeals. You know, you can appeal to the appeal. It, it may take you, man, 10, 20, 30 years to hit the electric chair or uh, what's that called? Um, death by lethal injection or, or the gas chamber. I don't know what they use, but you can do all these appeals, dude. And uh, you could be on the yard for a long time just wrecking havoc. Why? Dude, you know you're waiting to be executed, dude. That's why when I started this video, bro, I said live each day as if it's your last. Because let me tell you something, dude. Let's say you had a crystal ball, brother. And you knew the exact day you was going to die. And I'm just going to make this up so you can, feel, you can feel with me and be present in this video. I want you to understand life in maximum security prison. The horrific prehistoric, dude, Cro-Magnum Neanderthal, dude. Just animalistic. Savage barbarian. It's a jungle. That's why they call it the concrete jungle. The belly of the beast. 
So just share with me, man. I want you to understand, man. I want you to feel this, this feeling, dude. Let's just say you had a crystal ball. Or let's say, you know, I don't want to go all fancy dancy. Let's be realistic. Let's say you went to the doctor, man, and the doctor told you, wow, man, your blood work came back. And you got 30 days to live, my man. You got some incurable disease. And this is a new, this is a new rare disease from overseas that's come to America. And you're going to be healthy and happy and strong, but on 30 days, your whole total immune system is going to implode, dude. Your cells are going to implode and explode, and you're just going to disintegrate. You're just going to die. You're done. You're done. So get your affairs in order. And sit back for a minute, you youngsters who don't have ADHD and attention deficit disorder, man. You got ants in your pants. You got a fucking immediate gratification, dude. You can't sit through a fucking story that's five minutes. Just think about it. Wow. What would I do with my life if I only had 30 days to live? And then here's the, here's the, here's the, uh, the, total, the polar opposite when you come to my channel to be fed intellectually, spiritually, dude, and emotionally, dude. What would you dare to dream if you knew you could not fail? So what does that got to do with this video? Man, in maximum security prison, dude, this dead man walking, life without parole, double life, natural life, triple life, 150 years of life. Dude, if, even if you're 14 and they give you 150 years of life, how many people do you know personally that live to be 150 years. Like, we make a big deal when somebody makes it be like 101, 105. You don't know anybody in the triple digits, like, you know, 135, 140. You know, we applaud if they're 100 years old. So you get 150 to life, you're pretty much, you're pretty much, man, a zombie too, except you don't have the hangsman's noose over your head. So just imagine you're around this environment. Dudes waiting to be executed, bro. So they ain't giving a fuck about you, about what you're talking about, your mama, your story, your paperwork. So when the pedophiles come into maximum security prison, I don't know if they're trying to do penance. Like, listen to me, guys. You youngsters, you OGs, you, you middle-aged dudes, you dudes in your prime, dude. You dudes having a midlife crisis. Listen to your boy OG. I'm 62, about to be 63. This is my penance to you. I feel sorry and remorseful for the people that I helped meet Jesus because I had a bad temper and I was smart enough to circumvent the law so that I would get 26 years in prison instead of getting life in the death sentence. So now I look back and I'm so remorseful and sorry because, dude, it's, there's no glory in taking another man's life unless you're in battle for your country and you're defending those who can't defend themselves like this the children and the women and the elderly and the disabled. There's no glory in taking another man's life because he tried to rob you, dude, or he tried to he tried to hurt you, man. That's what I try to tell you. Youngs has been raised by single moms. There's no glory in taking somebody's life, dude. You're just a base animal, dude. You're a savage. So I just want you to share this environment, step into this environment with me. So these lifers, these dudes waiting on the death sentence, dead men walking, they feel remorseful, not because of the crime they did. I'm not saying all. Some may have remorse. Most of them don't. I've had lifer cellies that got double life, triple life, ain't never getting out. They ain't remorseful, most of them. They remorseful they got caught. But here's the remorse I want to share with you. They're remorseful that they done fucked their life off. Dude, youngsters, man. Quit coming on here trolling and clowning and trying to debunk me and telling me I'm lying and I'm capping, dude. Even if you don't agree with my philosophy, you don't like my stories, listen to the message, man. Correct your life while you're young, dude. You can soar to the highest height, but if you're locked up in the belly of the beast, these is the people that's waiting for you, man. And you ain't built for that, baby. Trust me. These dudes ain't never getting out, so they got this sense of remorse that they done fucked off their life, and here's how they rationalize it. Oh, man, these pedophiles be messing with babies and they baby grapers and stuff, man, and messing with little kids like R. Kelly and Michael Jackson and stuff, man, and messing with Bobo and just weird stuff. Any pedophile comes up in here, man, I'm releasing his soul to meet the devil because he's a Satan worshiper. This is how they rationalize, and they feel like they're doing penance to the universe because they about to meet their maker for the horrendous stuff they did. Yeah, 
maybe they're not a, a child molester or a, a rapist. But dude, maybe they're a serial killer, dude. Maybe they did some some masochistic stuff. Like they had they took they, they maybe they was a drug dealer. They was a gang member and they captured some drug dealers and they trying to get the money out of them. Like you gotta watch this movie, Paid in Full. No, that's not the movie. Yeah, Paid in Full. Yeah. Wow. Hey, you youngsters that think you hard and you OGs that want to understand how the youngsters got their minds brainwashed, dude, and their mind, their brains turned to mush in the garbage. Watch this movie called Paid in Full. It shows you, dude, how these gangsters, man, captured a drug dealer and his family, dude, and the horrendous things. They tortured them and slaughtered them and killed them, dude, like Jeffrey Dahmer style, dude. Where's the drugs, man? Where's the money? Where's all the drugs? And where's the machines? Man, I'm... Where's your husband? Baby, come home. And the lady's pregnant, dude. They did some Charles Manson shit on her, bro. And for those of you that don't know what Charles Manson did, he masterminded these squeaky from and these ladies. He brainwashed them on LSD and, and mind-altering drugs to go into this rich neighborhood in Beverly Hills and cut the babies out of women's bellies and sacrifice them to Satan. And before you guys say, hey, OG, stay on topic, this is on topic, man. Maximum Security Prison is full of demonic, savage, barbarian, Luciferian, Satan worshipers, dude. They got no soul. They got black eyes. Sometimes you're in prison, you see a dude got black eyes. He ain't got no soul. So these dudes waiting on the death sentence, man, they think it's their mission when the pedophile comes in, dude. They just straight slaughtering them, dude, like slaughtering them, dude. Watch this uh, this documentary about a dude named Troy Kelly. He's just slaughtering pedophiles like it's the thing to do. And what's the guards going to do, baby? The guards don't care. Some of them understand you're a pedophile, dude. They ain't caring. This is what they say. Let the animals kill each other. And I had to share this graphic story with you <coughs> because a lot of you guys come on here, you're confused. I have different stories, and the reason is I did most of my time in the SHU, segregated housing unit in maximum security prison for breaking dudes off. Did I break off pedophiles? No. Bro, I'm no saint, man. I'm no angel. I never mess with kids, baby, because I got kids and I like women that's old enough to consent to what, what I'm about to do and then they sign an NDA, that kind of thing. But I'm just saying, who am I to judge, bro? I don't know. There's, there's a couple cats I personally know was in there for pedophilia but here's what happened if you don't if you're new to my channel the one dude was a bouncer dude and this lady came in with a fake id she was actually uh 14 years old some of these girls look like women i got a niece at 14 look like a woman she's a model and they slip into the nightclub and he's thinking oh she's 21 you know she looks very cute pretty to be 21 he starts dating her because bouncers get a lot of girls you know what happens when you have unprotected sex? You got unprotected sex. Then the, the dad finds out, what the fuck? Who did this to my baby girl? It was the bouncer. I met the bouncer. How you meet a bouncer? I had a fake ID. And he did this to you, baby? Oh. If the parents press charges, he's in maximum security prison, dude, for statutory grape. And the shot callers ain't caring about your paperwork. These dudes are on the death row. The dead men walking, oh, you a pedophile? This is my penance to Jesus or whoever they believe in, Allah, Allah Buddha, Hare Krishna. They they trying, to, they trying to clean up their garbage, dude. Just like before Tuki got executed, dude. He's writing children's books and stuff, bro. I'm just saying. So the pedophiles get the blues in maximum security prison, dude. And so to me, maximum security prison is level five, level four. Some people say level three is maximum security prison. I'm going to tell, tell it to you like this. I think level three is medium security. Yeah, they still got some killers there, this and that. And, and the point system is such that you can be in level three, but you can go right back to level four. All you got to do is stab one dude, dude. First of all, they're going to get you manufacturing a little legal weapon. And then, you know, uh, attempted murder. If you murdered the dude, assault with a deadly weapon, all this. You get charges in prison, dude. And that's how I'm in this video. So then level four, they get they get straight taken out. That's why they PC them dudes up. This is why some channels tell you they PC them up. Okay. Level three, dude. Now we're getting down to level three, dude. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. 
some of the lifers down there, they don't like the, 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 the gladiator school barbarism of level four and five. So they calm down. The only reason they're going to kill you if you try to rob them or cheat them or you mess with their boyfriend in there. That's But if you're a pedophile walking around, they ain't really tripping. But here's the problem I want to share with you youngsters. When you youngsters come in there and you're not a gang member, or let's say you're a young gang member, you've never been to prison, the gangs want you to earn your stripes. What does that mean? And it's not what you think, youngsters. It's not to earn your stripes, to show that you're down, Holmes. Hey, Vato, show that you're down for the familia, Holmes. Mi gente is mi pueblo. Show that you're down for the cause, Holmes. No. That's what they tell you. What they really want you to do is to fuck yours off. They've been to level four and five. They've seen the nightmare and the demons, but you a new booty, right? You a youngster full of testosterone. You want to earn your stripes, right? You want to prove you somebody? They're going to send you torpedo hits on them pedophiles, dude. Then once you put the hit and you go to the shoe, maybe you killed the dude. Maybe you great bodily disfigurement. Do you maimed him? Put out his eye, slice his face open. You get charges in prison. Then you're going to then you're going to maximum security prison from medium. And you think medium? No, you see this was funny. When I went from level five to level four, motherfuckers knew, man. I was a real motherfucker. This dude came from level five. They know the stories, man. He don't give a fuck. He breaking dudes off. He don't give a fuck. I fight dirty, right? When I get to level three, man, they know. But then there's some new booties coming in there. They thinking that level three is maximum security. It's medium, medium, medium. It's medium. So let me end with, with this note here when I want to tell you the true story here. When you get down to level two and level one, level two and level one is full of pedophiles. Here's why. I want to share this with you, dude. The people in level two, man, this is what's called minimum security prison, dude. They're like... Uh, Maybe they they robbed the maybe they robbed the Seven Eleven. They robbed the uh, a supermarket. They snatched the old lady's purse. It's like low level crimes. Maybe they carjackers, dude. Nothing violent. Nothing serious. Maybe they got drug addiction. Maybe they're homeless. They got a violation. You know, they got a parole violation. And they violate the terms of their parole. Nothing serious. So these dudes is doing a little bit of time. So the pedophiles is just there's gangs of them walking around. It blew me away. And that's when I learned to just mind my own business, do my own time. Because when I let level five, they just straight PC'd up. Level four, they straight meet in Jesus, dude. Level three, the youngsters just take them out. Level two, they just, it's a plethora of them, dude. Level one, dude, I didn't see any pedophiles. Why? Because this is, uh, if level two is minimum, level one is, uh, what's the, wait, the word they call it? It's not minimum. It's, uh. It's when you can go outside the gate. I forget what they call it. I couldn't go outside the gate because of my uh, propensity for 187s. But there's some people can go outside the gate. And because of that, it's, it's called a different category. Help me out in the comments if you've been to a level one. Because level two to me is, is minimum. Level one, I just call it, let's call it open door policy. Because so many cats was escaping. Ask me why that didn't escape. Hey, OG, why didn't you escape? Because I had a year left. I had already did 10. I mean, I already did nine with some of the most serious killers and demonic, savage, Luciferian Satanism, dude. That's of devil worshipers. I already been through the darkness and I'm heading toward the light. Hallelujah, baby. So whatever's going on in level one ain't got nothing to do with me. And my reputation preceded me. They just let me walk around. They called me the savage monk, dude. All I did was read books, practice martial art on the yard, run and pray and do meditation, dude. So... I just noticed there weren't any child mol child molesters there because they had the ability to escape and touch children. Whereas level two is minimum, they're still housed behind the wall, and then nobody's bothering them. That's where the majority of the pedophiles are. So if you like this type of realness with the content, I can tell you my true stories, what I experienced. Please like the video. Please comment, like the video, and subscribe to the channel and share it, man, so I can get the message out. So we can let the youngsters know: don't waste your life in the in, the, in somebody's dungeon. So until next time, OG Summer back.